years back uh, when I attended a workshop on behavior design for social impact. So with, when I attended that workshop, it happened in Kochi and it was conducted by uh, Copenhagen Institute of Interaction Design. Uh, so when I attended that uh, workshop, uh, first thing was that, okay, when I come out of this workshop, I'm going to have a job with, in my hand. I'm going to be, you know, the certificate will be there that I can be used anywhere. So that was my mentality. But that one week of the workshop changed my perspective towards the design. That is how it started is like uh, how a behavior design or a design in itself can solve a social problem. So the uh, activities that where I was doing was mostly about how do we solve social problems? How do we reduce the hunger crisis? How do we, you know, the particular section of uh, people, uh, let's say that, uh, you know, those uh, Swiggy drivers or uh, the Zomato drivers who's suffering that uh, uh, recently one of the issue has raised that uh, Swiggy drivers are taking for a strike because, you know, they're traveling 12 kilometers, they're just charged for 20 rupees. So how do we, you know, uh, help corporate to uh, support those people and uh, include them and uh, how do we provide solution in order to avoid such things and also helps the improvement of the employees as well. Uh, so we were like uh, iterating on certain social problems that is not considered right now as this is more focused on the commercial part of where it's more focused on generating revenues. So uh, during that one week workshop, I got interested towards social design and I start, started to see the big picture of it. Like there are a lot of problems within India that is like, you know, in terms of even in the pandemic has uh, created a much more situation in terms of social problem. How do we as a designers are not even uh, people who have studied design, but as in everyone, economist or the accountant or the financial, any background asset, how do we make the social problem address it in a way that you know uh, provide a solution that can address the problems? So that is what we're going to talk about. Uh, like I said, uh, this is a very popular quote I saw that you would have seen also. Design won't save the world, but it damn sure make it looks good. But that is not in the current scenario. Uh, like uh, Steve Jobs says that design is not about what it looks like; it's about how it works. Uh, the word it defines not just only the product or the uh, web application or mobile application, it can be anything. You can put any word in that and it's just not about how it looks and it's going to be how it works. It's a set of a methodology that you apply for any practical problems or social problems. Uh, uh, with that, we can come up with a very feasible solution that can address the uh, human's need. So that is design. So design is about a set of methodology or a process and it is not a tool oriented or it's a visual oriented. It's about a process or methodology that you apply to a problem statement. Uh, be it a, any problem statement, it's going to be a automobile, so it's going to be a social problem or it's going to be a, a business problem. Uh, you apply that methodology and you come up with a tangible solution. Uh, you give a form to it uh, in the relevant field you are in. It could be a poster, it could be a uh, a car, uh, eco-friendly car or anything. So that is design. And next we will get into the social design part. So now that uh, we know about what is design, so this term social design is, will be very much easy for you to understand. That is we apply the same design methodology to solve the social problems. So that social problems involves about the sustainability solution on health or technology or how do you address the racial discrimination or how do you address the bigotry that is happening in our country. So, so many, uh, name any social problems and with that uh, uh, design methodology, we can solve it, come up with the tangible solutions. Uh, but then why it is have to be designed and why it can be labeled as like, you know, a social worker or a social policy maker, why it just have to be design oriented. That is because, as I said earlier, design is more about the process driven and not about the tools or uh, technology related to it. Hence that we use this design process to apply on any technology or any field and then come up with a solution. Uh, it is a systematic approach and much more than that is the collaborative approach, which means like uh, you don't only need a designer to work on this. That is like if you're familiar with the process, no matter what your background is, you could still uh, solve a problem. So it's more about how you collaborate with the team members. Uh, how do you talk with the uh, stakeholders or how do you talk with your clients? How do you involve economists into the picture? How do you involve uh, uh, the government officials who are uh, taking care of that situation? So it's about collaborative. You talk to people who are directly or indirectly related with that problem and come up with a solution. And much more important than that is that it's going to be human centered. 
So in the design process, we always think about the person you're designing for and not about the uh, business or about any other medium or any other environment. You keep the user in the front or you keep the human in the front and you start tailoring the solution uh, with them in the mind. So that's why we have called it as a social design. Uh, let's talk about the four principles of social design. So what is uh, really uh, possible, I mean, really important for the social design. Most of them involves uh, soft skills. That is something that uh, you learn from being empathetic or you learn from, you know, being responsible towards it. So we'll start with that, uh, ethics and empathy. So what I mean ethics is about your responsibility or your reflection towards the society. How do you react to a particular situation? How do you deal a particular situation? Or uh, when you, how do you talk with the person? So how you interact with them, not making them feel bad, but then you understand them and uh, take their pain points. There is a lot of difference between being sympathy and being empathy. Uh, sympathy is about you know uh, showing pity or like you know you sit with them and uh, you say that uh, you. It's a, you also cry with them or something that way. But empathy is about you understand that person's problem. You know why he's going through and you try to give a solution towards it. That is called empathy. So people with empathic nature and being with the socially responsible is more important and is the core principle of their social design. Uh, the second one is teaming and collaboration. It is not something that is done as a single person thing. Uh, nothing can be done in a single person. Uh, no one can just do or uh, you know come up with a solution. It always works as a team. You always need someone's input, someone's perspective towards your uh, uh, perspective towards the problem or the solution. So that's how it works. Uh, and then the collaboration, constantly talking with the people. Uh, you always keep uh, the person who's involved in the problem or talk with the minister in that particular uh, society or the community. So you constantly do and engage them in your act process. Next is the social literacy. How well you know about that problem. So this is something important without being like, you know, uh, you need to know what is happening around the around you. Why is certain thing is happening? You need to understand uh, why this particular statement has been revealed. Uh, so that is more of a social literacy. Next, we'll talk about design research. This is where you have to learn about the process that we apply uh, in order to solve the solution. So design research is more about conducting a, a user interview or you take an analytics that is already been done or a survey analytics with all that uh, given documents or given uh, you know, uh, the research documents, you try to understand where the problem lies or what is exactly the problem is, which is the biggest question in the design process. So that way design research is, and then with that going, you will take a decision whether you have to apply design thinking or system thinking, uh, which we will talk about that in the upcoming slides. So you will apply your design thinking or system thinking to solve the problem. And when you come up with the problem, you will give a form and function towards it. That is like, how is the user is going to see it, whether he's going to see it as a campaign or he's going to see it as a, as a service provider or it's going to be a product. So we define a common function for it and then the design entrepreneurship. So design entrepreneurship is something like how a design studio works. You take a product, uh, you take a feedback, iterate the product continuously in order to make it better. So that's called design entrepreneurship. So these are all the seven core principles that is important in order to uh, be an excel in the social design or be a part of social design. And uh, we'll talk about design thinking and system thinking because other skills are of more of a soft skill, whereas design thinking and the uh, system thinking is more of a process that you apply on a problem. Uh, there are a lot of design thinking process outside. One of them are Stanford designs uh, process and then IDEO's design process. Ideal design process is more widely used in terms of social problems. Why? Because they have a platform, they manage a platform, they, uh, they preach about the design thinking, uh, they invite ideas of uh, uh, what goes well, what not goes well, and then they implement it. So IDEO is one of the largest design consultancy agency that also does, uh, that also have a branch of uh, division within them that solves the social problems. So design thinking for social innovation term is something like uh, designers have traditionally focused on enhancing the look and functionality of products. Recently, they have begun using design tools to tackle more complex problems, such as finding way to provide low cost healthcare throughout the world. Business made first to embrace, embrace this new approach called design thinking. Now, nonprofits are being adapted to it too. 
So design thinking is being widely used across the developed nations, most of the European and the other Americans. They are all trying to. They are already excelled in the design thinking in their government policies, in their non-profit organization, or even the corporate sector itself. Uh, so this is something that's been there for quite a long time. Now we we'll talk about what is design thinking. So, what are all the stages of design thinking? Like I said, empathy is the most critical part of uh, design thinking process. Uh, so, how do we empathize with the user? Is like we conduct research. Uh, research can be like a, a user interview, which we say that we will talk with the user, collect their inputs about that problem, or develop an understanding about the people. Let's take a problem where uh, you know the plastic waste has been like uh, uh, there is a rural village where. Plastic waste is being like not properly taken care of. So your responsibility is how can you make the people uh, to dispose the plastic waste more responsibly? If that is your problem statement, then how do you start? Is you conduct research in that particular area. You talk with the people. You talk with, with the people who disposes the plastic waste or any other waste. How uh, take their reactions? Why, how they are dealing it with? So you come up with a set of questions and then ask them, um, conduct the interview with them and get their insight. With that, you will understand where the problem exactly lies, whether it's with the people or whether it's with the society or whether it's it's with the way the design, urban design has been planned. So you will understand the problems where it lies, and from there uh, you will define the problem. This is exactly the problem is. Uh, usually, the problem statement that we always take will be huge. So you should try to conduct a research and come up with a sensible problem statement that is narrowed down where you can easily solve it. Uh, let's say that you cannot solve a hunger problem in India. Okay, if I just give you, you know, just solve the hunger problem that is happening in India, so you may not able to take that problem statement and start. But if I cut it down, uh, how do you solve the hunger problem that happens within the uh, delivery or food delivery people who is constantly uh, delivering the food? You might have come up with a Zomato case few years back, uh, where that uh, delivery person was found eating. Tampering the food and that become a viral in Twitter. So you can take that uh, if you are look deeply into that uh, particular problem, you will understand that it's not about the tampering the food, but it's about his uh, work schedule. It's about the time that is not available for him to take the lunch, or the food problem, or the poverty problem behind it, or the hunger problem behind it. You you, you understand that problem and you take that and say that you know. How do we uh, eradicate this particular problem that is arising with the delivery people who could not find a time to eat? So you can take that particular problem, and then from there you can actually conduct interview with them, and then narrow it down, and then ideate it. Uh, so ideate is another set of uh, uh, stage where you come up with crazy ideas. That doesn't mean that all the ideas has to be feasible, but you can also think about robot coming and doing certain stuff. So you can talk about uh, uh, AR, VR stuff. You can talk about anything, but in the end, the designer will or designer or the decision maker uh, will pick up the idea that goes well with the uh, people or will go well with the corporate who's going to be manufacturing it or goes well with the technology that is available right now. So that's how we come up with the idea, and with that idea, we'll do a prototype, and then we'll do a rough prototype that does not involve a lot of money in it. Uh, it's more about like a paper and pencil or a cardboard box that just need a little bit of effort. And with that idea, you go to the people uh, and then test it with them. Uh, see how their reaction towards that. Is. Whether it's positive, whether it's positive or negative. Uh, take all those feedback, test it, and then you do the implementation. So this is the design thinking. This particular uh, problem can be applied across the. Okay, I'll come to the question uh, in the end. So uh, we'll do the test and then we'll do the implementation. Uh, next is system thinking. Now you see that design thinking is applied to a specific social problems. That is something uh, you know what is the problem. You do the research, you come up, come to a particular problem. Whereas system thinking is completely different and it's more, much more complex than where you can normally apply the design thinking. So system thinking is mostly for dynamic problems in complex environment, which means like uh, solving that particular problem might arise another problem in a different section. Let's say the hunger problem itself. When I talk about hunger, there are a lot of other problems that is related. That includes 
the economic status of that person or it includes the living condition of that person or it includes about the job conditions or much more factors are there behind that hunger problem so it's about looking into the bigger picture rather than uh, uh, just focusing on the problem so system thinking is applied for a very cr critical problems so these are all the process that we follow uh, plan your process and set goals that is like you must uh, do the process that is whether it's going to be taking design thinking or the system thinking if you feel that the environment is complex you go with the system thinking and you set it goals that is you have a vision and you see a possible outcome which means uh, the outcome can take a many number of years that is like you know hunger problem cannot be eradicated in one year but with continuous solution it might be eradicated or reduced in another 10 to 15 years so you see the uh, set the vision that is that after 15 years this is the solution and you come up with a forcible outcome that is what is the immediate outcome you can bring it so you set up a year and then you come up with that outcome and with that going you set up a multiple number of years and then you come up with a different iteration of outcomes and also uh, you have to take a clarity about the problem you talk about the cause and effects which means like uh, the effects the cause can be multiple so this will help you to understand how many leverages are going to be there how many gears going to be there to support this particular problem and find those leverage points how many intervention you can give in different problems so that you can make this particular goal works out that is like uh, uh, in order to eradicate the hunger problem i need to think about the job condition job status i, I need to think about the living conditions i need to think about the family status if, if the family is huge then i need to think about the family control planning so multiple factors have been related to it and then my solution will be on uh, all those factors that is like i will try to uh, come up with a policy that will affect uh, the family planning the economic the job growth the industrial uh, revolutions so all those uh, touch points i will try to uh, twiddle with it in order to bring up with this effect and then you need to act strate strategically and this is a learning process which means like at every stage you will learn something new and you change the process based on that uh, now i'm going to say, show you a video of what system thinking uh, a case study kind of um, how is it is done so let me open that video before that i saw some questions okay this can late all right uh, can you guys hear Systems thinking means understanding how systems are interconnected, as well as understanding the dynamics within systems. A system is a configuration of parts connected and joined together by a web of relationships or networks. Systems thinking is nonlinear. This means that in systems, cause and effect are not necessarily linked or connected with simple step-by-step -step chains. Connections between human and natural systems are of particular interest because they offer excellent examples of cascading effects. Cascading effects means that what might seem to be a simple outcome of a given system can actually have a series of effects on other interconnected systems. Let's consider the following quick example of system syncing. When looking at a hot dog, you might see a delicious ballpark fan favorite. However, have you ever considered how many miles, steps, or networks it takes to produce a hot dog with all your favorite toppings? Think about all the unique steps that are involved in producing just mustard. Mustard seeds come from India, and some of our favorite fancy mustards are prepared in France. Beyond the mustard seeds, mustards require turmeric, also made in India, and paprika from Hungary or the Netherlands. In addition, salt, water, and white vinegar are also needed. Considering the system that is involved in producing simply one condiment can be complex, let alone thinking about the entire process that is necessary to produce a fully loaded hot dog. People are not particularly well equipped for systems thinking. It's much easier to understand and interact with simple linear cause and effect chains. The more complex the system dynamics, the more difficult it is to know how decisions will play out. 
Oftentimes, decisions or actions at one point have an impact on another component within the system. For example, thinking about our ballpark hot dog, if mustard seed production is decreased by warmer weather patterns one year, then the price for this key ingredient is likely to rise. This, in turn, could limit production, making mustard seed more expensive and or not as readily available. Within systems thinking, it is important to see the interconnected nature of all the elements and to understand that reacting to a problem in one part of the system may have unintended consequences on other components or the process as a whole. Systems thinking does not claim complete knowledge. Rather, systems thinking is about assessing the degree of system complexity, analyzing system dynamics, and making decisions that reduce the risk of negative outcomes. To develop systems thinking, explore how things might change under different circumstances. Look at possible associations and connections beyond the information that is being presented. Consider conducting an institutional analysis, which includes a robust review of existing practices, mechanisms, and procedures currently in place. Share your findings with relevant stakeholders and discuss both hidden and visible flows. Seek possible explanations and relationships. Think more globally about how you are part of major economic, environmental, and social systems. Consider how these systems directly impact one another and how they influence the immediate systems you work within. So you guys have any doubt regarding system thinking? You can unmute yourself and talk. So, uh, okay, uh, with that I'll go uh, deep into the topic. Now you can see that system thinking is about uh, how one particular problem might rise into another problem. So we start this, when, when we take a topic that's going to be much complex, you apply system thinking and then come up with one problem and then apply a design process towards it. So it can work hands on ends, like a design thinking and system thinking can work hands on ends or you can just take system thinking and apply a process. Uh, design thinking may not work for every problem as in like the problem that is much more complex as like I said the dynamic problems like a hunger problem or something in that way but something a little bit more specific towards a particular region or specific toward a particular community design thinking might work. So uh, these are all the two important processes that we will be taking care and there are also other uh, process that will go into social design uh, which is uh, uh, which I will be talking about it in another topic. So uh, let's start with a case study on uh, design thinking. So this is about uh, creating a clean toilet uh, in a particular region in Ghana, that is like in a uh, Ghana region, uh, uh, how to build a toilet because they were proper uh, sanitary condition was not much uh, proper there. So uh, this case study is about like, uh, they found that in this particular rural area in Ghana, they were not using the uh, sanitation or they were going, uh, you know, uh, the toilets in the open environment. So uh, IDO as well as the Unilever, the corporate sector, as well as the uh, sanitation section, that is the urban poor, WSUP, water and sanitation for the urban poor. So these three teams came up with a solution. Uh, they, they did the design thinking for that particular region and then came up with a solution. So what they did is, uh, they interviewed the people. They started with the empathy stage. Uh, that is like, why is they not using the toilet? Even though they were building, building a toilet, they were like a community toilets, but people were not using them. So they took the research on it and then they understood that. Uh, usually there is a custom with the people that is like uh, in the night time, uh, they, 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 they call it as, they call it like a night soil tapers. That means like all the excretory systems are being taken. That is like all the pieces or uh, things will be uh, removed and then dumped in a different place. So there is a separate uh, workers for that who uh, dispose those things. But uh, it was banned in 1990 because uh, the night workers, what they did is like they were dump dumping it in an open ground where it attracts a lot of diseases. So they had banned that system. So what happened is uh, the night workers kind of community was removed, but then the, there were no people to clean the pieces. So this problem was a major thing that they saw. And then they came up with the ideas how to, how to do it. So what they identified is like they were dumping it in the common point. So they came up with a system that is like they came up with a toilet system that segregates the 
uh, urinary and the feces separately. That is, urinary is being disposed somewhere and then the feces is collected in a different position. And then they gave a, a economic condition, a, a job situation for those local workers who get paid for collecting the feces properly in a tank that is being uh, not disposed in the outside environment, but somewhere that can be uh, you know, used it and fertilized it uh, where there will be a separate uh, system that will fertilize this. So they introduce the system. So they, uh, they, the workers will come and collect the pieces. They transport it to a lorry and where that lorry will convert that pieces into a fertilizer and that fertilizer is again rotated back to the community. It comes up with a lot of more, uh, you know, crops uh, uh, productions. So with this solution, they solve the crop production. They improve the living condition of the people and also provided a job opportunities for the people with this solution. So this is social design. So addressing that problem and giving something, uh, bringing, making their lives a little bit more better and also solve the sanitation problem. So design thinking was used and IDEO design thinking was primarily used for this particular process. Uh, next, we'll talk about the system thinking case study. Uh, for this, I'll show a video which is like a, a very interesting one. Hi, I'm Brad Callen, and in this video, I'm going to show you how anyone can quickly and easily create doodle videos, just like the one you're watching right now. You in the 1950s, the Dayak people of Borneo, an island in Southeast Asia, were suffering from an outbreak of malaria, so they called the World Health Organization for help. The World Health Organization had a ready-made solution, which was to spray copious amounts of DDT around the island. With the application of DDT, the mosquitoes that carried the malaria were knocked down, and so was the malaria. There were some interesting side effects, though. The first was that the roofs of people's houses began to collapse on their heads. Turns out the DDT not only killed off the malaria-carrying mosquitoes, but it also killed a species of parasitic wasp that had controlled a population of thatch-eating caterpillars. Thatch being what the roofs of the Dayak people's homes were made from. Without the wasps, the caterpillars multiplied and flourished and began munching their way through the villagers' roofs. That was just the beginning. The DDT affected a lot of the island's other insects, which were eaten by the resident population of small lizards called geckos. The biological half-life of DDT is around eight years, so animals like geckos do not metabolize it very fast. It stays in their system for a long time. Over time, the geckos began to accumulate pretty high levels of DDT, and while they tolerated the DDT fairly well, the island's resident cats, which dined on the geckos, did not. The cats ate the geckos, and the DDT contained in the geckos killed the cats. With the cats gone, the island's population of rats came out to play. We all know what happens when rats multiply and flourish. Pretty soon, the Dayak people were back on the phone to the World Health Organization, only this time it wasn't malaria that was the problem. It was the plague and the destruction of their grain stores, both of which were caused by the overpopulation of rats. This time, though, the World Health Organization didn't have a ready-made solution and had to invent one. What did they do? They decided to parachute live cats into Borneo. Operation Cat Drop occurred courtesy of the Royal Air Force and eventually stabilized the situation. If you enjoyed. So, as you see, uh, that is a case study of system thinking that actually happened in a few years back. Uh, now we'll talk about the social design or in future. So far, any doubts? Uh, okay, we will address that in the question and answer. Uh, so uh, we'll talk about that in the uh, what is the future of the social design? 
like i said many developed nations start already started adapting social design in their government sections uh, in the corporate section or during the non profit section itself whereas in india it's predominantly very less compared to what is happening in the other countries uh, within the government actually the social design is still uh in within the non profit organization social design is being scattered and it's actually very low that uh, they are applying this process and corporates predominantly focusing on the uh, uh commercial design rather than the social design however many corporates has the csr responsibility that we call corporate and social responsibility where they uh, provide solution for uh, social problems but social design is not being adapted but uh, it's simply like uh, building a toilet system or building a a uh, particular system so uh, it it so happening but if social design is brought into the all the three section then the major of the problems can be solved uh, in the upcoming futures uh, so if you are interested in uh, uh, learning much more about the social design how to start and where to start is like these are all the resources that i'll share with you guys in the chat where you can learn about it uh, open edu.com if you go and see that uh, it's a platform for challenges if you are interested with uh, 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 if you directly want to provide solution uh, apply design thinking and come up with a solution uh, here you can go uh, they have lot of uh, challenges posted in this website you can participate in one challenges and then uh, uh, make a team and then uh, come up with an idea and then give it where the idea itself will take the solution and implement it in that region so you can check around this like uh, there, there are already uh, they also give prizes for uh, a better challenges you can see here like how to uh, add uh, the matrix challenges and the quick system mission to price so a lot of things are there uh, the other resources is like uh, cardi stone foundation you can see a lot of podcast related social designs are posted here it's more of a theoretical based section you can talk uh, here about the case studies how they have addressed a particular problems so all the podcast has been uh, posted here like for example designs race and discrimination imagining new features for the planet building made of sky so you can le uh, learn about that in this uh, particular uh, website and then design for health is uh, bill gates and melinda foundations where they uh, also uh, take people about uh, how do we uh, design solution for health section uh, you can talk uh, read about here it's a part of community uh, how uh, how you can enroll in that and learn and uh, give back to the society and then there is a dy dy uh, toolkit this is a very good one Uh, if you're going to start learning with the thing, like if you want to learn on the go, then you can start here. Uh, they have a different set of uh, tools or planner or kind of a process for each division. That is like uh, empathy stage. That is look ahead, develop a clear plan, clarify my priorities, collect input from others, know the people I'm working with, so uh, generate new ideas. These are all some of the tools that is already been there. You can use this in order to test that, and then. there is another one uh, this is new york city government's uh, service design website uh, here they talk about how their public service service in the new york they call it as a civic service design so how it is been addressed so it's more of a new york city oriented how they have done this uh, particular activities in their region so you can read about that over here Uh, these are all the interesting resources that you can start with but if you want to go theoretically uh, like if you want to learn more about it as in like uh, you need a certificate or you want to uh, learn it slow pace uh, then you can go towards here this is something that i would recommend highly recommend to do it uh, this is a free course that going to be started on uh, september 15th it's a 9 week course which means like you can take at your own pace you, you just have to spend 1 hour a week uh, learn about the human centered design Uh, you either form a team or make a team with the global people there are a lot of people who will be signing up you can make a team with them uh, internationally and then uh, take this course and then come up with a solution so i post this link also in the chat so once you have learned uh, here they talk about the design thinking also how they use how they address the problem uh this one and then the system practice so system practice uh, usually they'll release once or twice in a year uh, so the next system course is on january 19 uh in order to access other courses in this website you have to finish this particular one in order to access that one so everything is free you will get certificates also uh, if you want to have it but uh, uh, i would recommend learn it uh, you learn much more about uh, how a design can solve a lot of complex social problem and it's not necessary that you should know tools 
uh, that you should learn Photoshop or uh, Adobe Extra or anything to do that. But it's about the process and the solution you come up with. And that solution can take any form and function. It can be a campaign poster or it can be a, a you know a product design or anything. So that you can actually co collaborate with other designers or uh, in order to make that solution possible. So in uh, meanwhile, here are some of the ways you can start thinking like a social designer. First of all, we need to find the right problem to solve. Uh, in order to find the right problem, you uh, this stage is something like very critical. You might not know where to start. So how I uh, I personally have worked on some few case studies on social problems. Uh, so how I started was like uh, I went to, to this particular website called Sustainable Development Goals. Here, uh, this is a goal that has been de uh, developed by United Nations. So what they did is they came up with 17 set of goals and they gave these goals to every country that in, by 2030, they should be making a progress in that goals, which means all these goals are interrelated. So if you see how do you, um, goal number one is about low poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, clean water and sanitation, gender equality, quality education, affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth, industry innovation and infrastructure, responsible consumption and production. So like this, there are 17 uh, goals are there. Click on to one particular goal, read about that goal, whichever is like your few days of interest or uh, the particular one that you're going to work. Uh, you don't have to worry about that, you know, I don't know how to create a product or I don't know how to design a poster. Uh, it's not necessary, just uh, you, you may not have to think about the ideas all the time. You just focus about understanding the problem, how to solve that problem. And then you can think about the ideas. And the ideas are something that is, uh, you know, 10% of the time, uh, which means like making that idea possible is just a 10% of the entire big problem. So uh, read about that problem. For example, uh, uh, let's take this uh, responsible consumption and production. Read about that goal. See how many countries are progressing. See if you're interested about your country. Read about your country, where it stands for. Actually, unfortunately, we stand in the 110th position out of 140 countries. So our sustainable index is around 59. So which is like we have to constantly improve that. So what you can do is read about it, uh, apply for this. Either you're coming from non-profit or you're working with the government or you're working with the corporate. Uh, there will be, if you're working with the corporate, there will be a group that is uh, taking care of uh, corporate social responsibility, work with them, take this idea and then make this as a possible one. Uh, or if you're uh, directly related with an NGO or non-profit, uh, take a particular problem, apply in design thinking, system thinking, come up with a solution and then make it as a possible or at least make your ideas visible to the world. So in that way, you're actually contributing towards a society and that's where the social design actually starts with. Uh, so, any queries, uh, I'll just go back to the Zoom and I'll take back your queries. Uh, you can ask me anything related to this, I'll, I'll answer. Uh, hello. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Arjun. Hello. Hello, I'm Arjun. Uh, is the design system used at the initial stage of ideation or uh, problem solving or it comes with the, when the process, when we are in ideation stage? Okay, uh, design thinking is the process that is like there is no uh, particular stage. It starts from the day one. That is like uh, immediately when you start, uh, can you I'm hear me? I'm asking about uh, system design, like the process which we need. Right, right. So that's where, uh, like when you select a problem, right, you will know, uh, you will start understanding about the problem, which means like you talk to the users, everything, right? So at that stage, you will know that uh, whether this is a complex problem or it's something that we can solve by design thinking. If you think that it's uh, multiple different factors are involved in that, if you're taking a problem and you're uh, visualizing it and seeing that, uh, you know, uh, this hunger problem is just not a hunger problem, but it, it touches a lot of other sections of their problems also. In that way, you apply system thinking. So uh, system thinking is uh, uh, just to see the bigger picture, zoom out and see how the uh, bigger picture is, and then you start ideating the solution. So system thinking is like, if you understand the problem or if you cannot understand the problem, that's where system thinking will come into the picture. Uh, so did I add? used in the initial stage of the design process. Uh, okay, design, 
there is no initial stage as in uh, like see, uh, when you arrive when you elaborate the problem at the first initial stage you can bring few models or a few systems and right. we can process the design thinking uh, okay i did not quite understand but uh, what you are saying that when to bring the system thinking uh, during the design thinking yeah, or when to give the design thinking in in the for the for the day, for the concern problem okay uh, that's where i'm saying uh, you need to understand the problem first if the problem is complex enough to understand or if you know that there are multiple sections are coming so design thinking is the place where you have multiple stages right the empathy stage is there and then the define stage is there right so during the empathy you know that you are solving a complex problem so system thinking is an integration which means like you can bring into the design thinking and then uh, understand the problem and then take it towards the design thinking it's about how you uh, design the process based on the problem you see problem you have it in the hand thank you um any other questions i see a lot of questions here um, according to me design is okay you posted this in the beginning right uh, so yeah bharat um Uh, design is nothing but visual art of our feeling and conveying our needs to. So uh, we can't put it as a visual art, but it's about the solution of your feeling. You can add it as a solution, but not as art is something independent of design. Of course, like you know, uh, they play hand on hand uh, when it comes to form and function. But in terms of addressing the problem, it's more about the empathy and understanding how well the problem is. Uh, okay. any other doubts okay uh, hariharan has asked me a question uh, do you really think that social design thinking could have a solution for every problems around us so uh, we can't tell every problems as in uh, but it is possible at least you can come up with a sensible problem let's say that there are problems that you don't know it's a problem which means like you can't tell it's a problem so uh, you apply the process and you at least will come up with a sensible problem where you can give a solution towards it so personally if you ask me uh, name any problem we, if we uh, do a proper research proper understanding if we get a proper understanding it will be easy to solve it through some leverage points or through some of the way of uh, you know interventions we can solve it uh, so that's my answer for you uh, hey hi i have a small question now yeah. So, yeah uh first of all before i go ahead with my question i want to thank you for the presentation so uh, personally there was a lot of information that i could take away from this presentation so uh, the the one thing that i wanted to ask was you know i was really intrigued by the system thinking case study that you presented uh, with that youtube video so yeah. i wanted to study more on that so if you could please uh, you know if you could share some resources on that that would be helpful especially you know i was really taken by surprise when you said that they dropped cats by a parachute uh, yeah so. yeah yes i'll share that uh, i have a resources on system thinking uh, you you guys can drop your mail here uh, if you want me to forward the resources about uh, design thinking as well as system thinking i'll uh, mail you guys the resources but uh, also uh, i want you guys to work collaboratively if you can find a team with a similar mindset who wants to do it uh, that way you can actually indulge yourself in learning the uh, thinking and then apply it, apply it practically so i'll share it with you harish thank you uh, so i'll share my email id maybe you guys can ping me i'll reply you back with the yeah let's hope this so manso sir is asked some questions here so uh -huh. yeah before the, yeah welcome here sir welcoming manso sir here yeah he has some question here lavanya can you check in the uh, chat box uh, yes uh, can you give us such a problem and tell us how we solve it uh, yes sir i could do that uh, let me share uh, a particular uh, case study that i did uh, this is more about uh, related to uh, my field of industry that is user experience design how can i bring social design in terms of user experience so Uh, 
so i have done some uh, products related i mean like as a case study on this so how might we encourage okay not this one yeah how might we influence indians to conserve uh, en- energy at domestic household so i i took this particular problem statement where i thought uh, in india energy consumption that is like it's been uh, very less that is like most of them uh, are not much cared about their energy consumption unless they get a bill that is like when the bill is higher that's when they concern about saving their energy so what i did is like uh, i did a case study on this part so Uh, I did a design brief on energy conservation and environmental impact has been a worldwide concern for years now. The alarm rate which the crisis is growing is every individual's responsibility. So I started with this uh, with an assumption that you know I am going to be a startup uh, that is focused on energy concern and how do I build the products on it. So I did some discovery workshop that is like uh, uh, discovery workshop in the sense if I am going to be a startup going to build those products then I need to know about my feasibility and uh, my vision of the product. so i just started why am i starting with this initiative what is the big picture and what the success looks like so with these questions i know where i stand uh, my feasibility point and my technology standards uh, and then i came up with a problem overview like i said my way of finding the problems i go to the sustainable development goals read about all those uh, and then find out uh, you know where india stands on it so according to sdg uh, this is where uh, the world level problem is that is sustainable consumption and production is my uh, target goal so uh, i took up some insights like this like you know 500 billion units of energy could be saved by energy efficiency uh, only 19.9% of urban india waste is processed so this is a global level problem and then with that uh, i took the indian problems also so india problem is this one by 2030 india seeks to double the global rate of improvement in energy efficiency so if you are going to build a product and you are going to be a startup focused on uh, you know building social products then you need to know the vision properly uh, so if you are going to sell the product uh, you need to see the future of the product so you have to work hand on hand with your business as well as the society so with that you know uh, these are all some insights that i got from the sdg website itself uh with this gave me some insights about it and then this is my problem approach so i used ideas uh, design thinking that is like uh, this is similar to what i showed the five stages uh, inspiration ideation and implementation we have learned from people learn from expert uh, uh inspiration is about uh, learn from people that is like i talk with the people who is the direct uh, uh, resultant of this product and then expert expert is about uh, what i took care as an expert is like comparative analysis what other country is doing in order to solve this problem that was my uh, expert uh, interview and then the synthesis i did some card sorting grouping of uh, contents these are all some technical uh, uh, chatbots so i did i conducted some of the steps and come, came up with the uh, ideas and then i started doing that idea with by uh, doing a validation with the people so some of the uh, insight that i got based on behavior and attitude behavior is more about uh, how everyone is uh, it's it's more of a survey uh, you get behavior research in survey that is group of people reacting it in the same way and then attitudinal is like how their attitude is towards the problem interestingly i found that uh, most of the indians uh, were not concerned concerned uh, i mean like uh, concerned about the energy efficiency but they were concerned about saving money which is like uh they were not talking in units but they were talking in money which means like uh, this ac is running it would have cost 100 to 200 rupees just by that so that's how they are using the terminology so i found that interesting insight and then uh, uh, these are all the user personas that i interviewed and uh, these are all the uh, initiatives that was taken in other countries so sense lab is something smart home system that will track the energy consumption and uh, trigger the user that where it uh, when a device is on Uh, and then this is a uh, energy elephant this is something like um, it's not a system uh, it's it's more of a service uh, consultancy that they take the energy bills they analyze the energy bills and they give an insight that you know uh, you can save this many of electricity by just uh, uh, changing your devices to solar devices or changing the, they give an alternate suggestion towards it uh, so energy elephant is another uh, key studies that i took so i integrated these two ideas i came up with an idea that as this two Uh, goes with, on on with the indian customer so these are all the insight received during the research phase that is lack of transparency that is like they don't know how much air current is being uh, going on uh, if you have seen in uh, tamil nadu recently that energy as i mean that uh, 
uh, electricity bill has actually rise to something like 5000 10000 many people were getting and giving complaints that they don't know how it has happened so there was a lack of transparency so when that happens they directly go and visit the ed uh, station for it and then awareness which means like they are directly relating it with money but they are not aware about uh, that there will be a depletion of consumption or they do not aware about uh, uh, how much electricity is being wasted by them so mostly predictable that is like they know when they are going to uh, get the money higher that is like uh, during summer they know that their uh, electric i mean like ac is running so they know this much bill is going to come and then uh, prevention so when the ac bill is high or when the electricity bill is high immediately after next month to first two few days or something they start prevent uh, preserving the you know conserving the electricity so this was their uh, major key insight that i saw from them and with that i came up with the ideation like how do we install uh, sensors on the power panel and how do we uh, track those data and then you know feed it in your application in which uh, through that application how do you change the consumer's mindset um, make them aware of the electricity they are using so i have uh, introduced some of the uh, things like i will just show you Uh, yes, these are all the key uh, features. That is like uh, how how to set up device, uh, consume the real time data. You can set limit for each device and then turn off the device uh, if possible, or alert the people uh, if they can turn off the device. And then the social comparison. This is something uh, more of a behavior design concept. Like uh, usually people are competitive; they want to perform better than the others. Uh, this is more like a social bias we call it in the behavior design. So what they do is like uh, they wanted to. feel good so there is a interesting case study uh, uh, when i was doing this i read about a case study where in a particular region in mexico what they did is uh, in order to conserve the electricity uh, that community people uh, that community uh, uh, a community minister if i say that community minister what he did is uh, in every street he created a map that is like uh, uh, if each house is consuming lot of electricity there will be three levels Uh, and the third level will be the highest level so they will tell that to the people that you know this particular uh, house is consuming lot of energy so they change the graph every month so people wanted to show that they are below that line where that uh, smiley face is there and the uh, red one is the danger face so they wanted to stay below the smiley line so they always make sure that electricity is consumed so that their data will fall in that way so this came up a lot of behavior change with that community they started saving electricity so i took that particular idea and put it in the terms of mobile application like um, um yeah this way so where do you stand uh, how much the efficient neighbors are there and what is the average neighbors so if you are doing performing well then we get show up some uh, nice uh, you know smileys and say that you know you have just saved this much of electricity and then you have uh, given way to a lot of things in the future and then if you are like a uh, irresponsible or like consuming a lot of energy we show that you know like a uh, you have just uh, been lesser than these people so this way you are bringing that uh, behavior nudge to the people uh, on saving the electricity so these are all the other features uh, now on new journey and then the learnings so this is one of the case study that i worked on the social problem so uh, did i answer the question sir okay how does a personal bill problem yes i feel that uh, uh, when every house is like start saving the electricity can you put others on mute kavya sure sure lovely so uh, i what i understood is that sir like uh, when each uh, person can be each family member can uh, start uh, looking into the conservation seriously then we can bring the social, uh, saving electricity i think it's saving electricity is an individual problem that everyone has to contribute towards it so that personal bill in order to make that even if you see the electricity bill uh, if you uh, consume a lot of uh, units then they start giving a penalty uh, rather than the penalty if we give a uh, in addition to the penalty we give some impose of way of behavior not just like uh, make them to consume the electricity then i think that will also reduce the uh, uh, consumption problem in the future uh, 
any other doubt sir uh, did i answer that So, once you have a question, you can directly ask also. Yeah, actually, Lavana, it was a great session and uh, we really learned a lot. Thank you for the session, Lavana. Thank you, sir. And, uh, yeah. Uh, Mansur sir, we are really glad to have you here in this call. Uh, it is actually we are very uh, glad to have you here. Uh, would you like to add uh, something? Would you like to speak something? Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for inviting me. It was an awesome session. I mean, when people talk about design, there are so many aspects. And uh, this is a welcome speech. It definitely requires a different take on it. And uh, I'm happy many people have come and they are listening to all the perspectives of design. Uh, it's very clear. Uh, design is very difficult to define. Uh, and I guess the more we talk about design, and its implications and uh, usage, I think it's going to get more confusing for people, but somebody has got to do that job. And uh, excellent job, uh, Lavanya. Keep Thank it you, up. Sir. Thank you. My question about uh, how did something personal become a social one uh, was just to bring out uh, the entire picture in a story to say that you know, if I'm going to conserve electricity, then how does it matter for everybody else? Yes. So then it becomes a social cause. Yes. Uh, the awareness that, you know, the project should, or when you talk about uh, having social design, is to bring the social perspective into the personal one. So to say, if I'm going to save, let's say 10 units of electricity, uh, and many people like me together in a community, we should add up all that and show how it has impacted totally. So you see drops become an ocean, right? So that way, uh, if the projects, if anything, uh, any social problem, when we are trying to translate that to design, the bigger picture will actually help the swallower yeah. and vice versa. So uh, that's the point I was driving at. And that uh, you explained it very well. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I guess more and more uh, projects such as this should come out. Um, and we should have more organizations uh, or let's say more visibility about such projects and come to know about such organizations who, that's, who do such work. Uh, it's not so uh, evident in India, uh, but you do have a lot of projects that are going on in Bangalore uh, and Delhi, a few places uh, like Pune, Ahmedabad, but uh, it's all, you know, it's not very well known. Uh, people should come out people should talk about it. Uh, it should change the way our designers think about it and uh, make anything be more socially acceptable or, you know, uh, responsible, right? So whatever, we are, we are heading towards a, a very selfish uh, requirement uh, focus these days. Everything is about just me right? And that's not good for a community. We need to change that. We need more designers to think that, okay, how can I involve people socially? How can I involve the community in this? How can I make it just more than that person? So I really hope 
everybody is inspired today with your lovely talk and uh, loved your presentation as well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for making me speak as well. Uh, Ramya and your team, I guess I have seen you guys mature and at this point of maturity, really, I wish you well. And uh, I can see there's a lot of potential in what you guys are doing. It's not something everybody does. So all the best, you guys. Keep it up, Chuck, please. Take care. Thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Really, uh, it is a great motivation to us. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, anybody else want to add up anything here? Uh, anybody wants to talk? You have any question or anything? Yeah, come here. I think it's good to go. Okay. Uh, okay. I would like to introduce our next program, Design Thinking for Educators. I would like to give a brief introduction about this program. So the main motto of Chalkface is to uh, change the uh, way that education is happening today. So there are two main parts here. One is we have to uh, change what content is what content is being taught, and the other thing is what method. I mean, what to teach and how to teach. So we have to address both these if we want to make a change. So currently, in the name of Chalk Lab, we are already addressing the problem of what to teach. So we are taking a content and we are teaching it to the students, children. And now this program, Design Thinking for Educators, here we are addressing how to teach. So uh, with the educators who, are, who have experience of one to two years, we are going to train them on design thinking. Uh, so uh, please follow our Instagram page and Facebook page to get more updates on this. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to give a brief introduction about our next program. And uh, I'll share you the Chalkface uh, Instagram account and uh, a feedback form now. Just please fill the feedback form uh, and also provide us the suggestions on uh, what changes we have to make to the future Chalk Talks. And if you are interested in being a speaker in the Chalk Talk, uh, please provide in the comments also so that uh, we can schedule a call accordingly.